G'day, D-Live. D-Live? What? It's all over me right now. D-Live, it's in me, it's on me, it's about me. I'm all about D-Live. I meant to say, welcome back to the YouTube stream. It is Saturday, the 7th of December, 2019, and today I'll be live for 80 minutes. Eight zero, that is a 10th stream. Now, folks, there was a definite... Uh, delay there at the beginning of this stream. There was a black screen. Now, the reason that occurred is because previously, as of last week, you had to manually go into the studio dashboard and hit start stream. Now, I've set up a couple of test streams this week where I've planned that out to give myself a minute blank space and then go in and hit start stream on YouTube and then jump back into my software and, and start the stream there. Of course, that didn't need to happen. I started my stream in my software and I kept watching my screen with my one minute delay and I just happened to look up and see that it was broadcasting live with a black screen. I hadn't, I have, I still haven't hit go live on the YouTube studio beta. I have, it's still, it's still sitting there. I'll have a look at it now. It's still grayed out. It still says it needs to go live. So obviously the studio beta is glitchy as all crap and you don't need to do that any longer, but they never told us that. So, I don't know what to do. I mean, this stream is now going to be 81 minutes long because of that one minute buffer of black at the beginning. And if I try to trim that down, YouTube remove the comments from the fe the comments field. Uh, not the comments, the chat. They remove the chat. How? And look, I am really pumped up. I'm really excited. And I came out saying, welcome back DLive or g'day DLive. That's because it's been a massive, massive week on DLive for me. Um, without looking too deep into that, because this is YouTube and we got a lot of content to get through here on this stream, being a 10th stream. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting to you. Don't worry about that. I'm getting to that. Oh, yeah, it's a Jack stream. <laughs> oh, yeah. But this week on DLive, folks, well, we did have a pretty dubious stream on last Sunday. So a day, a day after this stream here on YouTube, last week so set so eight days ago there was a, a pretty crappy stream i gotta say um i made a couple of wrong decisions and my chat kind of informed me about why they're wrong and we made an an overall decision to make a few changes on the channel which we did but then it got dr well i don't want to dig too deep but it got brought back up again later in the week on the wednesday and then wednesday became dubious as well the end result of all that is that we've made these changes and the DLive gives a minute stream is awesome now. We don't have the troll action we used to have. We have a great chat going on amongst good crew. And by the way, I will get to the chat comments here right now with you guys. Just give me some time to, to deliver this opening monologue and we will get to, to all you beautiful. I see all of you there. It's beautiful. So yeah, um, on the DLive, we made a bunch of changes and we don't have the troll action. We've made a few um, sort of like internal changes where you have to be a follower of the stream to be able to chat. You've also got to wait 10 minutes before you can chat. I've got this Saturday morning YouTube nerves. I get I get freaking nervous doing a YouTube stream. What's going on? I've got to have a sip of water here. I am absolutely nervous, folks. I'm nervous. I don't get nervous on DLive. I get nervous as crap on YouTube. Wow, it's crazy. Calm, calm, calm. Deep, deep blue waters, calm. Got my streaming shirt on. This is the 10th stream shirt. I always wear the same shirt. Got my late father's cufflinks. I always bust out a set of cufflinks from my father, Jules. Put those on on the 10th stream, just as a little salute to him. So that being said, on the DLive, not only did all that stuff happen, but I achieved VP, verified partner status. And when I say I achieved that, it should really be heard as we achieved that. It's a two-way street, right? So all of this content on DLive is me and you, the givers. Now, not all of you, because not all of you go across there, but the bulk of you, I see, I see all of you in the chat. I'm, I'm going to get to the chat, believe me. I see a whole bunch of crew in there. It's awesome. Eagle VP, Aero Gamer, Charlotte Rose, North Rhyme MJ. I'm going to get to you guys. It's a, it's your boy, Moldy M. There you go. I'm going to definitely get to all you crew in a moment. Just want to just wanna smooth this out first. But VP on DLive, verified partner. Not only does it give you the little white VP tick, and therefore I'm representing the brand even more hardcore than I was before. As an affiliate, I was like, yeah, you should come to DLive. Now as a VP, I'm like, Tim, 
You should get your ass over to DLive, dude. You love it over there, man. Come on, get over there. You know, I'm trying to encourage everybody. But in terms of my content, what does it mean? Well, we get now 25 days of VOD storage, video on demand storage. So once the live stream's concluded, if you're an affiliate or if you're not an affiliate, your stream remains for three days and then it's deleted forever. Now I store all of my streams and bump them to a separate channel called the Gives A Minute, U uh, Gives a Minute D Live Archive on YouTube. This process of having them there for 25 days is gonna allow me to take my time with that, do it all in bulk when I get to better internet speeds. So that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. The other thing that it does, a couple of small things, it allows a subscriber only chat and a follower only chat. Now that was already the case. So I don't know how that's any any different, but that's already been the case, which I've just mentioned, we, we rolled that out. It also gives, this is pretty rad, but it's a small thing. It gives me a, car, uh, a customizable offline banner. So you know how you go onto the DLive and you see the streamer is offline, you see those red curtains with a little DLive man and it says streamer is offline. Well, I can change that to whatever I want. It's a subtle difference. Just makes the small kind of change. People come in, see the channel. This guy's got his own channel, his own branding. Looks good. So that's a good thing. The other thing, which is a little bit sort of, we don't want to talk too much about this because it was a bit of a contentious issue last week on the stream. The chest does now grow 50% faster than what it did before. And that's only important at the end of the week when I open the chest. It just basically means you guys will get a bigger cut of the pie at 50% more than what it was before I became VP. Now, the reason that's dubious is because there's a lot of comments saying, dude, you put too much pressure on the chest. Just let it go. Don't worry about it. So I'm not going to talk too much about it, but ultimately that benefits you guys, not me. That, that benefits you. And that's a beautiful thing because you guys encouraged me and helped me get there. So therefore you guys should get some of the reward. So you hear what I'm saying? Like you, you are getting a reward whether you wanted it or not. So just enjoy that. And when it comes out at the end of the week, you'll see, oh, wow, it's a bit bigger than it was before. Steak? Just, Money's too tight for steak. Steak? Toward Jack or the van. Benny. Grinning face with big eyes. Benny Crawford, toward Jack or the van. Grinning face with big eyes. I think they've changed their voice on the uh, text to speech. I love that. Benny, thank you so much for the donation, man. That's definitely going to go towards the van. You know what the van's all about. Folks, I want to bring up the chat here and I'm going to go back and address all of the chit chat. Before I do that, though, I've talked a lot about DLive. If you want to go across there, I've popped my little link to the Gives A Minute DLive in the chat. You can go across and have a look at it. You may like it over there, you may not like it. I stream there daily, so if you want to see a bit more Gives A Minute action, that's where to do it. And uh, I'll tell you what, it is a lot of fun over there. So that said, going back up to the top of the chit chat here, if we drag ourselves back up, we got DLE Crystal, we got Tim already before the stream. Thank you, folk, for jumping in early. Um, I asked how it was down there in Victoria. Everyone's good. Then Mindy jumped in, and I said, I'll see you all in 10. That's my 10-minute hair and makeup call. <laughs> takes 10 minutes to fix this hideous head. It actually takes 10 minutes to put the cufflinks on. I'm not going to lie. I don't wear cufflinks ever. It's, how do you put these things on one-handed? It's very strange. It's like doing a tie. I mean, what the hell's a tie? What do you need a tie for? I don't know. I don't wear them. Tim, hey Mindy, Mindy, uh, it's your boy Moldy M, and I want to say congrats and welcome to the new crew that are in here. It's your boy Moldy. I don't think we've seen your handle before. Thanks for swinging by the Gives a Minute YouTube stream. Appreciate you. Aero Gamer popping in at morning break at work. Well, Aero Gamer, thanks for swinging by the stream, man. Good to have you. Welcome to the to the chit chat, and it's live. Yeah, I don't understand how that went live. I didn't hit go live. I still haven't hit go live. So there's that. Haunted Jim in the chit chat. Haunted Jim, how do you do, my friend? Good to see you. Nice to have you here. Um, so we've got Aero and, and some Mindy saying hello. Is Swifty? Is Swifty what? Is Swifty? We know you. We know you from the D Live, and here you are on the YouTube. I haven't seen you on the D Live for some time, but here you are on the YouTube. Welcome, Is Swifty. Good cheers to you, my friend. Good to have you here. Is Swifty? Happy Canadian, happy Canadians in the chit chat too. Happy Canadian. How do you go, man? How do you do, Jeffrey? Shyla Rowe. I mean, <clears throat> Shyla Rowe's in the chit chat. Shyla Rose. That's a little harder to do first thing in the morning. <laughs> Good to see you, Shyla Rose. Good to have you here. I love your, I love your um, contributions. That comment you said about the positivity and negativity stream. The only negative I want to see. No. 
The only positive I want to see is the negative result on my birth test results. That was the best. I still remember that. Uh, Happy Canadian, Charlotte Rose, Northrop MJ, uh, okay, Haunted Jim, hey Northrop, hey Chocolate, Chocolate Martini, yeah, Mindy, you're going to go and buy ingredients for a Chocolate Martini, ooh, that sounds lovely, Adrian Banks in the chit chat, Adrian Banks, I'll be using your Jack Daniels glass, my friend, to decant Red Dog Saloon momentarily, that's going to be in here, so thank you, my friend, Adrian, good to see you, Eagle VP, Eagle VP, what? Eagle VP, I remember you from the creator, <clears throat> don't want to mention the creator cast days. I remember you there. Eagle VP, good to see you, man. Thanks for swinging by the Gives a Minute YouTube stream. Nice to have you. Been a while. In fact, Eagle VP and Aerogamer, I remember both of you from the creator cast days. So thanks for, um, thanks for not banning my friendship uh, when that all blew up. I appreciate that. Benny Crawford, Benny Crawford, good morning or evening. Benny Crawford, how do you do? The swell here is looking beautiful out there. It's a nice calm day no wind not much swell but it's clean and glassy i think i'm gonna get out there this after this stream it's your boy moldy says who here lives in england yeah not me man but uh we're all english from the beginning right from the start i mean my mother's english my father was german god bless his cotton socks with these beautiful cufflinks one day i'll pull out the um the little treasure chest i've got from my father you know i'll show it to you one day we'll, we'll talk about that some other time um, might might draw some tears though. That's the trouble. Sup, Ben? Uh, everyone's talking in the chat. Banksy, Banksy, Benny Crawford, Eagle VP, Charlotte Rose. Eli is fantastic. Loving the changes. Yeah, happy Canadian. Me too, man. Me too. Um, Eagle VP, North MJ, Benny Crawford. Congrats. Thank you, man. Thank you, Benny. Adrian Banks had to watch the Red Dog opening. I've had that bottle up my shirt. Have you? Have you got one? I'll talk about that, but. If you can nab one, you should nab it now before you uh, before they disappear entirely. D Live seems pretty awesome so far. Haunted and Haunted Jim's gone across to D Live. He's enjoying it. Thanks, Haunted Jim. I got a shout out. Yeah, it's your boy Moldy with a handle like that. Of course, you're gonna get a shout out. Um, okay, not long until your cruise. Yeah, Charlotte Rose talking to uh, Adrian Banks. Call me Moldy. Okay, Moldy, Moldy. That's cool. Um, but Adrian Banks, uh, one week and counting until he gets on board a ship boat. Well, that's gonna be fun. Tim Arkskog, I'm as I'm driving, I can only listen today unless I get one of my passengers to text for me. That's okay, Tim. I was going to try to push you across to DLive. Now's the chance to jump over there. I've just become verified, so there's going to be a great... Well, there's more of an incentive, right, to go across and watch my streams, if you, if you follow, if you follow. I'm still trying to figure all that parts of DLive out. Yeah, look, i got to say, when you come across for the first time, it is a little bit sort of strange. You look at it and it's a little bit cluttered and a little bit clustered, way more than here on YouTube. YouTube is a kind of like a clean, well, customer-facing YouTube is clean, but creator-facing YouTube is congested and, and mishmashed, if I can be so bold. Um... It's your boy. I've been, I've been, you've been before. moldy has been here before, but lost track of the videos and came back. I'm loving it so fat so far. Okay, thanks, man. I appreciate you having you back, man. It's going. Happy Bud Friday. Uh, sorry, I can't recognize you all individually by name, says Timbo. Eagle VP, Adrian Banks. The only negative I want to see is a negative pregnancy test. That was the comment. That was so cool, Shiloh Rose. Shiloh Rose with the waves. Just having a gin and tonic with a slice. Eagle VP, heck yeah. Now that is up to date with the chat, folks. We have now hit the chat on the head. There's a couple of things I want to do before we get into the Jack opening. Um, there's also uh, an AMA that's going to take part of this stream. So we have some preloaded questions from the givers. We're going to, I think it might be better to do that after the Jack opening because I'll be a little bit loosey magoose to answer the questions. So what I want to do before we get into anything else is just to show you guys and to highlight if you wanted to uh, win your own full face snorkel mask. You know I do snorkel reviews on the channel. Well, this is the latest one I've done. It's from a company called Snorkel Mart. This is the retailer for this mask. The mask is called a Vutech, V-U-E, Tech full face snorkel mask. Um, the, the sister company is called Deep Blue Gear, but the actual retailer is Snorkel Mart. Now this is the mask. It's a really unique mask. It's got these very interesting side purge valves, which no other mask has. Now what does this entitle, entitle you to do? As you're swimming, if any water happens to get in the dry top snorkel, which it does often, you know, there might be a little leak that comes in there, just a little bit. It runs down the face of your mask and enters into this, this um, breathing apparatus where you breathe. 
and eventually it kind of fills up, right? It comes up to a, a, about there and you start to sort of feel a little bit of discomfort. Well, what you do with this mask, you grasp the sides of the mask, your temples, right around on the purge area, you block that off, so you seal that sucker up, and you give it a big blow, and out of the bottom here, blah, 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 all that water emanates and comes out, and then you have a clean, uh, water-free mask. It's pretty rad, it works really, really well. Also, as you're snorkeling, cruising along, you get these little bubble sensation comes out of the side. And you can hear it because it's right next to your ears. So it's a kind of a unique little, a little sort of side difference that this mask has than other masks. And the beauty of it is there's a giveaway going on right now on my YouTube channel. I put a little link in the chit chat again. If you go to that link, watch the vlog. That's the review of this mask that'll tell you how to enter the competition. The giveaway of that will occur here on this live stream in approximately six weeks, five weeks, where now? Four weeks, five weeks. The first weekend, the first stream of 2020. That'll be when this goes giveaway. Um, but yeah, a very cool mask. I'm very, very excited to, to see when companies make their own little unique changes to a very, uh, a very played out design, right? These masks, these concepts, they're pretty well played out now, but there are companies doing their own little twist on it and Snorkel Mart Deep Blue Gear is definitely one of them, and this is the mask. By the way, this is not the one you would win. You would win a fresh one sent straight from Snorkel Mart. This one's mine. I'll be keeping that little sucker. Yeah, there you go. That's what I should do tomorrow. Go snorkel Tempe Town Lake, Haunted Jim Really, Yeah, get out there, man. Enter the competition first, and then potentially in the new year, you'll get your own mask there. I'm pretty stoked to be able to offer that. And that's in conjunction with Snorkel Mart. That's not gonna come from me. You'll get a re you'll get the shipment from Snorkel Mart as if you were buying. And by the way, that comes with a, with a um, I was gonna say snorkel, comes with a, um, what are they called? Fortune cookie, a fortune cookie inside the mask. You open up the mask and you're looking for the instructions and a little fortune cookie pops out and you're like, okay. Crack that sucker open. I'm not sure if they've got the same message in all, but um, my one said, there will be snorkeling in your future. <laughs> and I laughed at it. I thought, just a little subtle little, you know, like a little nicety that they include. It's your boy Moldy. I'm a subscriber. Yeah, there you go. That's not actually how you win the mask, but I appreciate you subscribing. You don't actually have to be a sub to win the mask. Um, I see a lot of channels doing that, you know subscribe, share, and like to enter. I don't care if you subscribe, share, or like. I don't, I mean, obviously I do care eventually, but I'm not, I'm not begging, I'm not begging you on the guise of a, of a giveaway. The only thing I want to see is that you watch the content and the way you enter, the requirement to enter proves that you have watched it. So that's, that's what I do. And like people come in there and they don't actually do what I asked and they don't get entered. So you have to do what I asked in the video in order to enter. And it's a two part, two parter too. So you can't just enter and then go, I'm gonna be in the comp. You have to enter, you gotta come back to this stream on the first week of February of January and watch the stream. That's the other thing that happened. But now there is one other thing that happened this week that I want to address before we get into Jackie. Um, that sounds a bit dubious, but we'll get into Jackie and then the AMA uh, and these will take extended questions as well. But there is something else that occurred now, I, I still don't know who this is, but I've blacked out the requirements. This came in the mail for me this week. So it's addressed to me, but it came from Viking Prospecting. Um, so uh, there's a couple of funny things here. So Ben on Kirpsch, uh, spelt slightly wrong, but I appreciate you giving it a stab. Mystery handle, whoever this is. Care of gives a damn minute. <laughs> And then I blacked out my address there, but this is a, an internal Australia post item, so it's from Australia. Now, the reason I'm opening this up on the stream, um, by the way, if it's you in the chat who sent this, you can let me know, uh, you can let the chat know if you want. If you don't wanna let anybody know you wanna keep it a secret, by all means, keep it a secret. Um, I'm not giving out any information here except that you're from Altona North in Victoria. That's not a huge giveaway. It doesn't mean anything to me. Um, well, I know where Victoria is, but it says here, Viking Prospecting, and then in brackets it says, doesn't give a damn. <laughs> and then, hashtag for Saturday live streaming opening. That's why I haven't opened this yet. So here we go, folks. I mean, is this dangerous? Could I, could I be risking opening up something dubious that's going to cause me harm here? Um, Viking Prospecting. I don't know, Viking prospecting, are you uh, a hater of mine and you're trying to hurt me here? Because, I mean, this is going to happen live. Let me just put this out there, folks. If 
You can't see the address here, but if anything dubious happens and I'm I'm gone after this, well, try to decipher what that is. Come to my house, grab whatever that is, and try to work it out because I could die here. Viking prospecting. You know, you've, I've seen YouTubers that have had dubious packages sent to them. Ah, yes! This is sick! Look at this, folks. I can't actually put this on. Well, I can. I'll take these headphones off. Look at this. Nothing dubious about this. Unless the cap is lined with poison. How do I, uh... How do I do this? By the way, this is probably a, um... Oh, that's as fat, that's as, fat as it goes? Wow, dudes. Oh, no, there's a bit more there. I was going to say, I've got a big fat nog and this isn't going to fit on my head. Look, I mean, I appreciate the gesture, but um, <laughs> look at me. This is why I don't wear baseball caps, folks. Look at this. Does this, does this look absolutely, totally ridiculous on me? I don't... I appreciate the gesture and I was going to talk about that too. I may talk about it another time, but I've... um. I've gone to uh, a doctor this week to get this thing checked out here. Um, this thing here, right? I went to the doctor and um, they're taking a punch biopsy and the doctor said more than likely that will be a cancerous uh, skin cancer. So I'm already trying to make this more stylish. But what I was going to say is um, I'm thinking about getting a, a wide, a full hat, like a full circular brimmed hat. So I, I, I mean, I really appreciate this gesture, but doesn't work on me, does it? Look at it. It looks hideous, right? I look, I look so silly. That looks great, says Happy Canadian. The cap game, Charlotte Rose. I mean, I'll, I'll put it on every now and then for, for giggles, but I don't know. Um, I think I think I need a big, fat, like, a complete rimmed hat that comes around here, right? And it's all floppy and cool. But I appreciate this from Viking Prospecting. Appreciate you, man. Pace yourself, drink responsibly. Good message there from Mr. Jack Daniels. I plan on doing that today as well, of course. No need to go crazy with the drinks, is there? It's like, just keep yourself respectable. Um, Benny Crawford, not me. Mindy says, open it. Haunted Jim, call me Ethan. Moldy now wants to be called Ethan. Okay, funny you should mention Ethan. There's a question coming up on the AMA and my answer is Ethan, which is interesting. Um, wasn't me, okay. Okay, phew. Uh, cap game, Northrop MJ, that looks great. You think it looks great? Wow, okay. Maybe you gotta wear some glasses there, happy Canadian. Maybe it's laced with lice, Tim. Could be, dude. I mean, there could have been poison interlaced with the cap down here. <laughs> if you're looking deep enough, you could find anything. Uh, Mindy says a basil cell mostly. I like basil in my in my um, pasta. Not too dangerous. Put it on backwards, Benny. Put the cap on backwards. Okay. What am I, Jay Boston? Look at it. Look at my hideous head. I just caps just don't work on me. Look at this. Is this what you wanted to see? <laughs> this is Mark Ensby, right? Uh, so the thing with uh, everything is, I don't know anything about things, but I'll talk about things like I know about things. Uh, what is that? Like, what? What is... I mean, I don't... What? I. What does he say? He said, um... What did he say about DLive? It's a scam! It's such a scam! It's a huge scam! I, I mean, it's a scam! That's all, he, that's all he could say. It's a scam! I mean, fair dinkum crikey, it says, right, oh, it's a scam. And this is how he looks. I can't, I can't do that. I can't do that. Try sideways, um, Ethan. Ethan says, try sideways. Shit, what am I doing? Putting every... Now that's more stylish, right? What am I, the Beastie Boys? <laughs> no, we're not doing that. That's Look, I, I totally and utterly appreciate the gift, and I will wear it. Don't get me wrong. There'll be times when I'll be like... You know, I'm doing a review or something, and I'll go down and put the put the cap on. I'm not gonna. I'm not denying a gift, right? I'm totally stoked. Get a cowboy hat, something like that, like a big rimmed floppy hat with like something that waves in front of you, and like maybe they they can wave the flags, the flies away, blah blah blah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But I totally, I'd I'd like to thank the mystery guest, the mystery. Um, uh, I was gonna say streamer, the mystery handle who sent this to me. Thank you very much. This is definitely appreciated. I've never actually seen a Jack Daniels racing cap. It's kind of strange, isn't it? Jack Daniels sponsoring car racing? Don't drink and drive, but uh, here at this sporting event, when you can drive as fast as you damn well please, we'll endorse that. It's kind of strange. By the way, 
I'm not endorsed by Jack Daniels, so I can say whatever I like. <laughs> Remember we made that that uh, live stream about what I should do about that situation? Well, that's coming up. That that um, process, what we decided, is going to come up next month. So we'll get to that. Folks, I do want to open the Red Dog Saloon. But before we get there, I'd like to show you a band that has absolutely nothing to do with me, except that I like them. Welcome back to the Slightly Random Daily Song! Band of Skulls! Now, this band has no real connection to me at all, aside from we used to listen to uh, their debut album on tour with Tracer in the tour bus. They had a record out called Baby Dollface Baby Dollface Baby Dollface something sweet Baby Dollface sugar honey All the nice words you would call someone Baby Dollface sugar love honey It's kind of it's a strange name but that was the album we used to listen to uh, and we really enjoyed it, really, really liked their stuff. Uh, they're a three-piece, they're from Southampton in the UK, in England. And uh, yeah, well, I've photographed them a couple of times here in Australia after the tours. And uh, I want to share it with you because I bought a tour shirt. But I want to play you a track not off Baby Dollface Sugar Honey. What is the name of that album? I'm going to find it for you. I've got the freaking internet right here in my hand, haven't I? Uh, Wikipedia. Baby Darling Dollface Honey. That's the name of their first record, but that's all cool. I'm not gonna play you a track off that. I'm gonna play you the title track off their second album. Now this one came out in 2012. This album's called Sweet Sour. And the track I wanna play you is also called Sweet Sour. And you get to see a beautiful ocean, a strange ocean today. No waves at Culborough Beach. Very, very lake-esque. So how about we pop you down? You can watch the lake in action. If I pop you guys here, pretty much like that. You can enjoy watching the lake and you can listen to Band of Skulls with Sweet Sour off the album called Sweet Sour. Ah, what was I thinking? This is copyrighted. You can't listen to this on the stream. They'll tag the whole stream. Dear, 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 dear. All right, folks, instead of listening to Band of Skulls with Sweet Sour, how about you listen to these beautiful magpie sounds that were just outside my bedroom yesterday morning? And trust me, the Band of Skulls track is great. Go and search it yourself. Copyright, you might be right.
folks. Band of Skulls from Sweet Sour, their second album and the track Sweet Sour. Did you enjoy that? What a cool sound, huh? Three piece out of England, awesome stuff. Highly recommended. No real connection to me except that I enjoy the music, bought the shirt, photographed them twice. Now they have had three albums since Sweet Sour. And I can't think of any of the names of them. Um, Himalayan was one of them. Now look, while I sit down and try to recall the names of the other albums, you guys can go back to the live stream. <laughs> Oh shit, I was live. I've sussed something out here, folks. The person who sent this to me is a smoker. Oh, oh let me, let me, let me go back. Either the warehouse where this shipped from was uh, a smoker handling it, or the person who owned it and sent it to me is a smoker because there is definitely cigarette smell in here. Now I'm not an, I'm not a smoker, so I'm extremely susceptible to this. Totally a smoker. Have I, if if oh no, but if I was gonna say if I've got that right in the chat, can you say yes or no? But that would let me know who it is. So don't just have a little giggle to yourself if I've got that right, because I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm onto something there. Um, by the way, and I saw the comments there while that was rolling. Yeah, unfortunately here on YouTube it's copyright copy wrong, right? All the things that go against you from playing music. Um, which I mean, I can kind of understand. Like, if you're a, if you're a record label, you've paid a certain amount of money to an artist to acquire the rights to something. You should be able to uh, have some reimbursement for it. My thoughts are, it shouldn't ding the whole stream. It should be a percentage of the stream. So I don't like if I said, well, for the next two and a half minutes, we're going to hear Sweet Sour from Band of Skulls, and I'm happy to let that ad source revenue, uh, AdSense revenue, go to BMG or whoever their their record label is. Fine, that's the two and a half minutes of an 80 minute stream. I don't mind that, but that's not what happens. The Instead, the entire stream gets given to BMG, which is just criminal. That's why that's why I don't play the music here and, and accurately in the chat, DLive, right? DLive doesn't have that. So if you wanna if you wanna have fun on, on, on the stream and listen to music, come across to my verified partner DLive channel where we don't have to put up with those rules. There's a little linky poo in the chit chat right there for that if you want to go and see it. That's my DLive channel. But that does open up the idea, a concept of whenever I'm not surfing or whenever there's not some pre-roll content, maybe I could showcase something that I've recorded the sound of Australia. Like we've had last week, we had the cackling frogs. This week we had the magpies. Perhaps I could do like, um, if I can obtain some sounds of the black cockatoos, you guys get a kick out of that. Some kookaburras. And by the way, that image of the magpie, that's one of my photos as well. So maybe I could sort of roll out with Australianisms, right? Like content that is Australia. That could be an option. If, if you think that that'd be cool, in, interesting content. Folks, let us open the jack. It is, it is a, oh, my sister just texted me about my doctor's appointment. I'm live, Vanya, if you're watching. Baxter, Pockmorn, if you're watching my stream, let, let, your, let your sister, let your mother know that I'm live and I can't answer her message. Don't text me between the hours of 9 a.m. to whenever on a Saturday. I'll be live. But that'd be cool, Haunted Jim. You'd like to see different parts, different, or you'd like to hear different sounds of Australia. It'd all be sounds I record as well. I mean, I don't mind doing that. That'd be pretty, pretty cool to get out there and record as well. By the way, those magpies, they're just out, out of my door here. They come up and they I hand feed them. And what I did, which was really sort of, I don't know, I felt kind of bad doing it. But after I made that recording one time, I then, about a week later, I played it back. Like I put my phone down on the ground and I played it. And then I hand fed the magpies and they were tripping out about this noise. They were like, what is this noise? Like, what? why do we have, why, why is there the sound of, our birds coming from inside that room. It was like very, they were very, very confused, right? And eventually they got so skiddy, they took off and left. And I was like, man, I just, I must have just spoken to them in bird language and they didn't like it and they scooted it off, even though there was food there. What animal would leave food behind? I wouldn't. Folks, if you are here for the Jack Daniels opening, it's going to happen right about now. But I want to let you know that this is a thing that we do every 10 streams on YouTube. Now, I stream daily on DLive, but I stream weekly on YouTube. 
the idea behind weekly streams is that it gives us a chance to build up a, a potential conversation and a discussion point. Every stream gets longer by one minute. Now that's a little tricky to work out with the new YouTube studio beta crap. I'm having difficulty nailing these streams down. This one's 80 minutes. I feel like it's gonna go for 81 because of this one minute buffer. We'll, we'll work that out at the end. But every 10 streams, I've made a decision to open a special bottle of Jack. Now the idea is that the Jack will never repeat itself. So you will always see a, a bottle we've never seen before, whether that be a different size bottle or a different bottle in its, like a different product in its entirety. Now, since this concept has rolled out, we've actually opened, I'm gonna say, well, this is 10, isn't it? No, eight, of course, 80. This is eight, eighth week. So we've done eight bottles. Now, what I've done is I'm putting links in the chat. Well, I'm not, my stream deck is, but the links in the chat go to specifically timestamp links in the live streams that have previously rolled. If you want to go and see previous openings, starting off there with the 1907, that's an Australia only release. So I'm just saying, if you want to go across and consume that content that you might just be here for, if you're just a Jack Daniels fan, you think I'm a raving lunatic, sniffing freaking hats and playing magpie sounds, and all you want is the Jack Daniels, well, there are the other ones that we've already done. This guy here behind me is a new bottle, a unique bottle, right? A very unique bottle. Haunted Jim says, cheers, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Cheers, man. So I've got to say that this bottle behind me is something I've looked at for some time. I don't know. I don't think you can get this any longer. Should we get it down and should we uh, should we open this sucker? It's called Red Dog Saloon. Let's do this. This makes me very happy every 10 weeks to, to reach behind and grab this sucker. Folks, this is the Red Dog Saloon from Jack Daniels. This bottle is a commemorative bottle. It celebrates the 125th anniversary of this saloon, Red Dog, opening up in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Now there was two saloons that uh, Mr. Jack Daniels himself opened, one of them being Red Dog, the other one, White Rabbit Saloon. Now, interestingly, they call this they call this a special bottle of old number seven. So in, in this in this bottle is what I understand old number seven. Not much different, right? Not much difference to regulation old number seven. It is bottled at a higher ABV, alcohol by volume. This is 43%, whereas regulation, what I call regulation old number seven, that's bottled at 40%. So there's a bit more bang to your buck here. We're gonna test it. We're gonna we're gonna find out whether this does taste any different to old number seven or if it is just kind of like a, a marketing thing, right? So yeah, this celebrates the 125th anniversary of the Red Dog Saloon. Um, it's, this saloon was opened up by, by Mr. Jack Daniels himself back in 1892. So that means that this bottle came out in 2017 as the 125th anniversary. Also, it was a, you see there it says it was available almost globally. Now, why does the word almost come in there? It wasn't completely across the global market, but most uh, large countries that, Brown Foreman is the distributor for Jack Daniels worldwide, and most most territories got this bottle. You may still be able to find it in your own country. I know in Australia it's extremely hard to find. There are places that import, like they still import bulk cartons of it, like cases of it, so you might be able to nab it that way. I know Adrian Banks is looking forward to um, getting a bottle himself. Do an English accent? You want me to do an English accent, Ethan? What 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 kind of English accent? What I do? I don't know what kind of English accent I could possibly do. I mean, I could I could probably switch between a bunch of different English accents, but I'm not very good at it. Um, so yeah, the, and and Lynchburg. Interestingly, the tenor, uh, the Red Dog Saloon opened up in Lynchburg Town Square back in the day when you could buy alcohol in Lynchburg. Obviously, these days it's a complete dry zone. You can't even purchase alcohol you've got to go to the distillery to get it. So that's why the, uh, well, that's not why the uh, saloon is gone, but that's the fact that you can't buy alcohol in Lynchburg. Back in this day, you damn well could. Um, and interestingly, yeah, there is no photos of that saloon in existence. It doesn't, it's, it's like it's been, it, it's almost like it wiped off the face of the earth. No one, no one knows about it, right? No one knows where it is, what it was, why it was, where it, like there's no record of it. So this here is a record of that saloon and I am extremely excited to open it, so let us do that. That was a terrible accent. What are you talking about? Get out of here, man. Bus wankers, get out of here. Okay, folks, let's do this. Let's open Red Dog Saloon. 
This is extremely exciting. You've no idea how much I've been waiting for this. This is this is huge for me, folks. I'm extremely, extremely excited. Oh, you know what I should do first? I forgot to show you. It comes in a beautiful collector's package, right? This is not all Jack comes in these beautiful collector's packages. This one does. It basically mimics the bottle if you look at the contents. Um, the same kind of... Um, I went the wrong way. The same kind of contents on the bottle as, as on... You get you get me, right? I'm going the wrong way here, but you get me. Red Dog Saloon, yeah. Same kind of contents, but there you go. A nice collector's bottle. If you if you are a collector, and I've somewhat inadvertently become a collector, there are two of these. This one here will be stored and saved and potentially given to Pokemon when he becomes of age, just as a little, you know, a little thing. I mean, there's no point holding onto something and then dying, is there? You'd rather give it to someone. So I'm collecting them for the time being. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Probably Baxter. Uh, Ethan's got to go. No worries. Uh, see you, Ethan. Take care, my friend. Thanks for swinging by the chat, man. Good to have you here. I'm going to give you a cheers. You want me to ASMR this, Charlotte Rose? Not on the not on the Jack's opening. No way. I don't want to give this... I don't want to make this any more comical than what it already is. In the sense that I'm a big fat joke. There you go, folks. Red Dog Saloon. Oh, ooh. Holy sweetness. Holy sweet mother of Red Dog. See how I just turned that so the label faces you? I didn't turn it the whole way. Dudes. This is... Wow, that is really, really sweet. It's almost like 1907. Far out, folks. Um, Adrian Banks, thanks for the uh, Jack Daniels glass here. Let's, let's give this a shot. A shot? A shot. Red Dog Saloon, I can't believe we're opening this. Now, I've been told that the best way... See how I'm going to go to scratch that thing? That's what I was doing then. I went past it, but I was going to scratch it. I've been told the best way to take a whiskey is to open mouth sip. Of course, you've got to open your mouth to get to it, but then leave it open to let the air aerate it. So I'm going to do that right now. Oh, dudes, dudes. Dudes, this is extremely beautiful. I wish there was someone here with me to cheers it to. I'll cheers it to an imaginary person. Here we go. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that uh, it's got a cinnamon on the nose and uh, a light banana essence. I'm not gonna talk like that, and I don't talk like that on any of these openings. That is extremely smooth and sweet, though. I don't know, I don't know exactly how different this is from old number seven, except that it's got well, well and truly more sweet tones. It's ex it's like very, very close to. Um, it's very, very close to the 1907, the Australia only release, which isn't going to mean anything to the global industry or the global players. But if you're in Australia and you know 1907, it's really, really nice. I mean, it's extremely nice. Haunted Jim, cheers. Cheers, my friend. Banksy! Cheers, my friends. Northrop MJ, cheers. This Red Dog Saloon, as I said, potentially old number seven rebranded bottled at a slightly higher ABV. It does taste sweeter than what I thought old number seven tasted like. There is only one way though to actually confirm by opening up a bottle of trusty old number seven itself and comparing the two, right? So let me do that in the spirit of a non-biased review here and a genuine review let us crack an old number seven and just do a side-by-side -side comparison test. Because it would be remiss of me if I didn't do this. Am I right? It would be remiss of me if I didn't compare the two. Now we know, we know the, we know the flavor there. Oh yeah, this is so much different. Adrian, wishing I was... That's that's who I was thinking of, Adrian, when, when, when I said if someone was here. I wish you were here with me, man. Totally. This, this is so different. Wow. Yep. I, could, I can spot that. That's incredibly different. Let's, let's go a, a slightly uh, small smash of old number seven here. 
Now you can. I probably should put a drop more in there so we can compare actual colouring. Actually, let's go a little, little, little bit more red dog in the old red doggy. I mean, you can sort of see, right? Uh, uh, old number seven here on this side looks a little bit more darker, whereas red doggy looks a little bit more lighter. So let's go, let's go a bit more red dog at this point. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Old number seven is what you'd expect, you know. You know that flavor. And it's a very, um, it's a very, it's like, it's got a little bitter aftertaste to it. This guy, smoothness, sweetness, very, very easy to, to slam back. I mean, I, I would, if I had to say, I would say I would rather, that's not the one, I would rather Red Dog than Odd Number 7. Unfortunately, Red Dog is a limited edition, so you're not going to get much of it. But if you can find it, my hot tip would be bloody well get it. It's absolutely tasty as. Nothing wrong with Odd Number 7, of course. That is, that is just there for comparison's sakes. Just so you know, the odd number seven is the guy in the clear glass. The uh, red dog is the actual Jack Daniels glass. That has been the opening of Red Dog Saloon. I Amber waves of grain. Yeah, I could talk like that, but I, I don't like when I see reviews of, of any alcohol where they talk that way. Like, I just want to talk to you in normal words, like normal feelings, right? The Red Dog Saloon, it's so, so smooth and sweet. It's kind of like the Gentleman Jack sweetness. Old number seven. Yeah, old number seven has a little tang to it, a little hit. It sort of snaps you a little bit. It's still, it's still a very similar flavoring, but it kind of smacks you a little. A little bit of a snap like a... Whereas the Red Dog's more like a... You get me? Like, it's just a little, like, a little patter around the head. Um... I love 1907. I'm scared to try Red Dog because of the price. I drink the JDs. I love like water. Yeah, Adrian. And by the way, at this point, I would suggest going to Dan Murphy's and getting three bottles of 1907 for under 100 bucks. That is definitely the cheapest way to get it at the moment. Charlotte Rose, I agree. It's wanky the way they talk that way. Yeah, totally. Folks, whilst I enjoy the... I'm going to just keep sipping the Red Dog here. Whilst I enjoy the Red Dog, let's move across to an AMA. So these are the questions that have been asked in the week. Let me just have another swig here. These are the questions that have come through uh, throughout the week. But if you have questions yourself that you want to ask now live, you can certainly ask them in the chat. I'll go ahead and try my best to answer them. But we'll kick off by asking the questions that have been pre-rolled. -pre so we have first question here comes from Elvis Costello. <laughs> Elvis Cordero. Uh, he asks, when are you doing a wave a day again and will it be a different board? Very good question. I've decided to do a wave a day in the month of February not January. I normally take two months off, which would make me... So I did October. I'd normally take October, November, December off and come back in January. The only thing is, I've already done January surfing. So previously on a wave a day, I did January. And I'm thinking it's good to do a different month. So it's going to be February. And the best thing about it is I've now done every season right here at the front of this break, like this beach break on a regular sandbank. There is a better... Um, a better bank to be had and it's the northern end of the beach so for the wave a day February which is the summer edition it's not going to be here I'm going to walk every day it's about a kilometer up the beach to the northern end and there there is a left hand break that comes in it's like it's I guess it's kind of like a reef break it's 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 sand and rock right but and every all the surfers go there and I've had I've had crew out here tell me you should be up here with us on on this wave so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to step it up as for the second part of your question, will it be with a different board? Unfortunately, that's not up to my decision. That's up to my sponsor, Global Surf Industries, to assess my surfing and say, well, we've seen your progress. We think you're now ready for this board or that board. I don't have any say in that. I mean, I, I, I would, I'm, I'm loving the 7S Superfish. It's a great board. But if there's one that's going to be better for me, then that's the point of the sponsorship and that's the point of the content that 
people can see my progression using the quiver. That's the word that they use, the quiver of boards available from Global Surf Industries. So that way, over the course of maybe three or four years or even five years, you can see the progress from this absolute kook on a foamy to the modern Highline, to the 7S Superfish, to whatever the next step up is. And what I'm hoping, call this presumptuous, but what I'm hoping is when I do eventually arrive at the top of their quiver, I hope to get a gives a minute board, right? Make my own board. And that way we can start selling that that board. That's the idea. Um, I love the Gentleman Jack and honey flavor. And by the way, Haunted Jim, yes. And also that honey is now on special. If you're a member of the Dan Murphy's page, you get that even cheaper too. So I'd suggest getting the three... I'd suggest getting three... Oh, by the way, the single barrel select is also on special for under... a. I think it's like 90 bucks if you remember. It's a great time to purchase Jack Daniels on Dan Murphy's right now. There's member specials going out the wazoo. Have Faffy Days in the chit chat. G'day, Faffy Day. How do you do, man? So thanks for the question, Elvis Costello. Uh, he did have a second question he swung in with too. Have you ever tried psychedelics, mushrooms, DMT, or LSD? The answer there is no. The answer there is a no with a but. I've experimented with a bunch of different drugs over my time. And when I say experimented with, I've never been addicted to anything, really. I mean, I do enjoy my, my jacks, and you could argue that's a drug as well. But I've, you know, I've a bit of pot, some other, some, other hard, some other hard drugs, but I don't want to talk too much about it, right? I'm not encouraging drug use, but I'm just saying I've, I'm not shy to it. And this question, have you ever tried psychedelics like shrooms, DMT, or LSD? The answer is a no, but there's, the answer is a no, but I would like to. Like I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie about it. I would like to try that uh, in a controlled environment with friends. I definitely would not be. Um, I would not say no. I would if if the situation was right. I'd give it a give it a shot. Happy Canadian. That'd be awesome having your own board. Yeah. Could you imagine a Gibbs a minute branded board on Global Surf Industries? I mean, that could be a while off, but uh, that is a while off. But that's the that's the ultimate goal in my mind. Um, and Global Surf Industries providing uh, financial funding as well to the channel. That's that's the ultimate goal there. So the next question came in from Tim Arskog. He says, My sister is wanting to know if you have any plans to come to Melbourne Town, because if you are, you can stay at her place. Now, Tim, is that a... I mean, that kind of reads like... Well, I mean, I don't want to be presumptuous, but that could be read a couple of different ways. Um, thank you. I don't know your sister. Uh, I appreciate the offer. Tim's sister. Hello, Tim's sister. Nice to see you. Um, thanks for the for the generosity. I, I, I do have plans to come to Melbourne Town. Um, sure. I mean, yeah, Tim. I mean, that's what, what else can I say? Thank you. Thank you for the offering. Uh, Northrop MJ, who's in the chit chat right now. Mindy up in the chit chat she says did you ever hear back from the international courier position you applied for if you're wondering what that is referencing to we were talking about how can i get jack daniels products that aren't available in the country how can i get certain products from outside australia into australia at the most affordable uh, method well the easiest way to do that would be to fly out of the country and bring them back myself with the limited amount you're illegally allowed to and duty free as well so what have i i looked at the way to the best way or the most economical way to travel an international courier position. These people are paid to go in and out of the country on multiple assignments, right? Now it's all legitimatized. It's not, you're not drug running. It's a legitimate business. And I applied for a gig with, with a company. It kind of looked too good to be true, to be honest. And um, well, long and the short of it is it was too good to be true. Nobody's ever got back to me. So I don't know whether my application went to nobody or whether my application went and someone saw it and went, Pfft, this guy, I don't know. I don't know. My application was legit. My my uh, opening letter was legit, and I just never heard anything back. So, it'd be a great way to come back and like in and out of the country with. I, I could then bring Jack products with me. I could basically I could get all of the the southern uh, the um the not southern peach the um what are they called the country cocktails. I could get all those in a, in a few different trips, right? And then I could review them, but. If you go to Burning Man, the shrooms are all over the place. You know where the shrooms were? We picked them like when I was living in New Zealand in 2000. I, I should have tried shrooms back then because my chef I worked for, he used to always pick them up at Moak Lake and come back and cook them up uh, in a pan, right? And I didn't try them. I should have right there. 
Nice question, Mindy. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, and another question Mindy had was, when is Poopsie going to be back at the beach? Funnily enough, they're coming down on the 27th after Christmas. So you'll definitely see Poopsie again here on the stream. Um, she loves it down here. And she's like, she's such a sweetheart, you know, five years of age. Holy red dog. Yes, just gets better with each with each sip. So yeah, she's coming back. Their whole family's coming back around the 27th. Um, Paula, you can grow shrooms on your own. The spores are online and legal. You know what's... Um, I don't know about you guys, but the shrooms in, in New Zealand, they grow from cow shit. So they grow in the paddy of the cow shit. And up at Moak Lake, if you ever go to Queenstown, far out, if you ever go to Queenstown, ask a local where Moak Lake is. M-O-K-E, Moak Lake. It's a short drive, maybe a kilometer and a half out of Queenstown along the lake. whack And you turn a right up to... Lake Alexandria? No. Lake Kirkpatrick is first, and then you go a little bit further along and let Moak Lake, and holy crap, there is there are shrooms everywhere up there, and there's a freaking beautiful view too. Moak Lake is the one of the... Well, I, I vlogged it there when I was there with Jed Boards. Moak Lake is a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. I'd highly recommend getting there. Uh, that's a great question. Thanks, Mindy. She also said, uh, your sister was really fun on the live stream on DLive. Yeah, I had my sister come down too. Uh, any plans for her to make another guest appearance? Yeah, well, she she said, look, whenever I'm down, you know, she'll jump on the stream. She'll come in and sit down. And the kids always love it. So it's kind of good to get the kids out of her hair and let her chill with, you know, relaxing with a drink, usually a gin. And then at some point she'll come in and sort of like kind of hound me to, you know, are you cooking dinner? Nudge, 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 nudge. Can you come out and, and, and be with the family instead of streaming? Paula, yeah, I was researching this a few years ago. There are online stores from Amsterdam that sell grow kits. Wow. Yeah, okay. Uh, they are trying to legalize psychedelic shrooms in Denver. Okay, interesting. I feel like that one that will never happen here in Australia. I think that there's too many, um, too many dicks on the dance floor, right? There's too many people that will ruin it. I mean, pot isn't even legal in Australia, right? Well, there's 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 decriminalization in certain areas, but it's still a big no-no. And like, I mean, yeah, I don't mind a joint here and there. Like, I'm not a big smoker, but why? What's the difference sitting here with a jack or, or puffing on a jazz cigarette? I don't see the big deal, but it, it, it is a big deal in this country. And so we got to respect the laws. And that's why you'll never see me doing a dab, a doobie dab stream on DLive because it's illegal in my country. Now, if I was ever over in the States, maybe I'd do a dab doobie doobie dappy, whatever those streams are called, where everyone smokes up. Thanks for the question, Mindy. Uh, Scotty Ventures says, if you were not doing photography, what would you think you would be doing? What would your dream job be if you could do it tomorrow? Now, Scotty, that's a banging question. I don't really have an answer for that because, I mean, I love photography, right? I love all aspects of photography. I, I even love the corporate stuff. Like I did a corporate gig. I did two corporate gigs recently and I love it. I don't, I think photography is a, is a brilliant, uh, I'm going to say art form, but in that sense, it's just a job when you're doing corporate stuff. Uh, scroll up and see what I wrote on on JD Berry. Oh, I didn't see it. Purd beer. Um, back up. Purd beer says I just opened up a bottle of red. Join is also being prepared. They're very nice. Very nice. Purd beer. Uh, I didn't see your comment about the. Um, and by the way, I couldn't find you in the Discord either. Purd beer. Um, I can't see your comment on the. Uh, I'll have to look at it after the stream. Purd beer. I'll have to look at it after the stream. I don't want to... Yeah, I missed it. I missed it, man. Sorry, dude. I'll, I'll check it out after the stream. But if I couldn't find you in the Discord. Can you DM me on the Discord and we'll talk there as well? Um, yeah, I, I feel like my dream job... So look, if, if... The dream situation for me would be live streaming a combination of IRL and sit-down streams, right? If I if I could get the... the it's not here on, on YouTube, but the, the big the almighty electric van fund. If I could get an electric van and travel around the country creating content. Now, I know that's not typically a job, but if I could monetize that to the point where it was sustainable and it was earning me the, the money that I need to continue living, that would be the ideal dream. I don't want to use the word job. That would be the dream scenario for me. Um, I think we're making advances to that. Like I got to say, within the next two years, that's my ultimate goal, to not be based here, but to be moving around in a vehicle streaming. And it's going to be an electric vehicle. It's not going to be a petrol guzzler. It's going to be an electric vehicle, solar power, living in it, doing IRL content, showing Australia, showing uh, the beautiful parts of this country, 
live to the to the internet. That's the plan. So, good question, Scotty. I don't think I answered it exactly because I don't really. I don't think I want a job as such. I mean, a courier job would be pretty rad for the benefits of bringing in the jack, right? But as far as a job job goes, I don't really, I don't really have one up my sleeve that I would love. But yeah, I feel like I'm doing the best I can. The next question from Happy Canadian, right there in the chit chat. Happy Canadian, you should also come to Canada for the green. Yeah, well, I, I did. I know. I, I, I'm very well aware of the Canadian grass. It's, uh, it's great. It's great. Um. Uh, too long didn't read says heard beer uh, Barry was only available at concerts and festivals in Germany in the last days they are a press release saying it's getting a general off trade release in the DE oh really okay interesting that's a shame that's a shame um, thanks for looking into it though Paula I do have another source in Germany that sort of has managed to find a few but yeah if it's getting a if it's getting removed then that's a shame but I'll have to look at other other options uh happy canadian says if you could do a photo shoot with a celebrity who would it be and why wow celebrities um that's the end of the red dog from that swig there i gotta say i don't really do celebrity i don't i don't rate celebrities funnily enough i did have a dream last night about um the hilltop hoods that's kind of strange um i know those boys from working with them but they were in my dream last night, but celebrities, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really care too much for them. Like I just think celebrities are just people with better jobs, better paying jobs, and they work less than we do. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I said before when Ethan was in the chat, told me to call him Ethan. Have you heard about the new train set that goes from Brisbane to Adelaide? No, I haven't, Benny. Wow, that's a huge a train from Brisbane to Adelaide. Interesting. Um. But I mentioned to Ethan before, if if I could do a photo shoot with a celebrity, I mean, I'd pick, there's two categories there, dead celebrities and alive celebrities. I guess for a dead celebrity, I'd probably go like, you know, like probably like um, bloody um, Hendrix or Cobain, right? Like just, just someone that meant a lot to me, like probably more Cobain than, than Hendrix. Um, but Kurt Cobain kind of changed everything when I was a kid and... I guess that's one celebrity, but he's dead. So maybe Steve Jobs. Now, and and I don't really care too much for it. But if you had to push me to answer, and I'm I'm answering the question, but if I could do a photo shoot with, with a celebrity, maybe live celebrities. I guess in today's age, I kind of look up to like Elon Musk, and just for the for the strides and the advances he's making and the changes. I think that'd be a pretty cool. And when I say a photo shoot, like. When I do portrait settings, it's usually a case of, you know, I get to meet the person, hang out with them, and later on we do the shoot. So it'd be a case of sitting down with, with Elon for an hour or so, or even going for a tour of the factory, hanging out with him, having my, my setup already prepared, and then basically at the end saying, okay, dude, let's go and do the shoot. And uh, I like talking to you, but I've got to click the shutter now. So sit down there and uh, here we go. And that'd be done within three to four minutes, but the rest of it would be the getting to know the guy. In that regard, live uh, alive celebrities, I reckon uh, I'd go, and I said Ethan, Ethan, um, and Ethan and Ela Klein. Uh, I've got a lot of respect for these guys. I've been watching them for pretty much since the beginning of their podcast. I got a lot of flack from people for watching the H three podcast back in the day, but now apparently it's all okay to watch. I think Jake Paul went on there, or no, um, uh, Casey Neistat went on there, and suddenly Ethan and, and Ela are okay to watch. Whereas I got. I remember saying this on the creator cast and they're like, oh, they're terrible. They don't present very well. They're, she's terrible with the, with the voice and he's a very terrible host and just terrible. And I was like, actually, I love it because they're genuine. They're people. They're not disguising who they are and they're straight down the line. So Ethan and Hila, ma mainly Ethan, probably Ethan. Uh, Hila's kind of nice, but I would, if yeah, it could be Ethan, Ethan Klein. I think he's a nice guy. I think he's a genuine guy. I think he's a legit guy. He's a legit content creator. Um, along those same lines, now this is a little bit dubious. Larry David, Larry David, would be interesting. I think I think Larry David and I could really sort of argue about a lot of things and come to the same kind of conclusion about people and about situations, right? Larry David, on that regard. Um, I mean, that's a bunch, I guess. And oh, the the boys from Ween, Dean and Gene Ween, of course. I mean, I. And again, not so much for the photography, but just for, for the for the social hanging out, just kicking back and 
talking about cool stuff, but I don't, I, I don't celebrity people. I don't care. I've, I've shot, I've sat with celebrities. I don't, I don't care. I had, I had uh, TH in the room. So I was photographing the big day out and I've been a skateboarder since I was 11. Right. And the big day out tour always had skateboarders. And this year was the return to, to uh, Tony Hawk, TH, Tony Hawk, um, touring with the big day out. And I'm the press photographer. So I'm in, in the, in the room just getting my camera gear ready and whatever. And the, the Tony Hawk demo, everyone else has been skating already, but of course, TH is going to appear at 20 past four until 40 past four for 20 minutes skate. And I'm in the back room there getting just some shit out. And, and TH, TH is across the way from me. And I was like, you know what, man? Like this, this guy, this guy is massive in skateboarding and he, he, he's responsible for a huge part of my life. I don't care too much for him. Like, I don't care to go up and can you autograph my flash or my camera? Or what? That's not me. I don't care for that. So I just went up and said, hey, man, thanks for skateboarding and nice to see you back in Australia and I'm going to photograph you. Have a good skate. And he's like, he was a little bit standoffish. He's like, oh, thanks, man. And then he kept putting his pads on. And that, for me, that's that's enough. I'm not, I'm not going to like chummy up to Tony Hawk. He knows who he is. I know who he is. We're skateboarders or I was. I mean, still got it in me, but... I'm not going to go up there and beg beg for an autograph, blah, 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 blah. I'd rather go out and see him drop in and do a frontside rock as his first trick, which he did, and I got a photo of it. So, um, Musk is opening up a factory on the border of Berlin, up to 10,000 jobs, and maybe also a design center in the middle of Berlin. Wow, dude. Great answers, Happy Canadian said. Thank you, man. That'd be great to work with Elon. Hope it happens for you, Ben. Yeah, I mean, who knows, Benny? The world, I mean... <sighs> Who knows? Elon's a pretty genuine guy, I feel, and it, it might be a, an opportunity down the line. Who knows? That's a nice uh, question from Happy Canadian. Another one from Happy Canadian. What's your least favorite food? Wow, dude. Um, most f least favorite food. By the way, that's now the old number seven. Um, it's got to be Brussels sprouts, right? Brussels sprouts. I've never been able to adequately change my taste buds to accept that food. As you grow older... I think your taste buds mature with you and you can you can say some food that I hated as a child is palatable to me right now. It never never was, right? Maybe carrots, maybe peas, maybe the texture of like mashed potato or, or uh, mashed uh, sweet potato, whatever it is, maybe it didn't work as a kid, but as you get older, it works. Well, Brussels sprouts has never worked for me. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried eating them. I'm like, this is hideous, this food, so bad. So bad. Tony is a down to earth man. Love his work. Yeah. And look, and, and as a, that's the thing, like with Tony Hawk, explain how you feel about the copper law. Okay. Racing gamer. We'll touch on that too. Just, just quickly with Tony Hawk, there is such a huge audience that somehow and suddenly became fans of his, but I gotta, I gotta like smoke all of them. Right. I was a, I was a fan of Tony Hawk when I was 11, when skateboarding was nothing. Skateboarding was a, a joke, right? People were laughing at me because I was skateboarding. And Tony Hawk was the guy all over my wall, all the posters, right? He's the guy when I was Baxter's age that I was like, I want to meet Tony Hawk. I want to meet Tony Hawk. And I went through my entire life. Tony Hawk's the role model. He's the greatest skateboarder ever to have lived. There was an article in a, in a magazine that said, the caption was Tony Hawk, the man who fell to earth and landed it. And I thought that was brilliant. This guy is a genius. And I've looked up to him my whole life. And then suddenly... He became this household name. And I was like, you dudes have never even set foot on a skateboard. You never even dropped in on a mini ramp. So who the hell are you? Get out. Like, that's my celebrity. But as I got older, I'm like, well, he can have whatever the fans he has. Good on him. But I don't care. As a human and as an adult, I don't care about that celebrity status. And there was proof of it when I was in the same room as him. There was no one else in there, by the way. It was just me and him. I was at my bag. He was getting his pads on. I just said, dude, thanks for skateboarding. Have a good session out there. I'll be photographing it. And he went, thanks, man. Done. That's my interaction with Tony Hawk. That's all I need to have. The last question came from Angus Ferguson. Ties into this discussion quite well. Did you ever skate professionally? If you're looking at earning an income from something to be classed as a professional, no, I've never earned an income from skateboarding. But I did take it extremely um, legitimate, serious, to the point where I moved interstate to be closer to the, the, the vert ramp in this country. We only had one vert ramp on this coast, on the east coast. Uh, one good one. It was called Mona Vale. Uh, it's still there to this day. They've resurfaced it recently, but the transition is the same. It was 11 foot with one and 40, 40 foot wide. 
And then another ramp opened up in South Australia in Adelaide in West Beach, and it was 11 foot with one and 70 feet wide. So I went, I flew across for the opening day demo and skated in the demo, and the ramp was so sick. I said, that's it. And I drove across there and lived there. And that's how my life in Adelaide began because I moved from Sydney to Adelaide to skate vert at West Beach. And I was competing. Um, I competed since I... The first ever competition I went in was in New Zealand and I got seventh out of eight people. <laughs> and that wasn't a vert comp, that was a bowl comp. But as far as uh, professional, I did have a couple of... I wouldn't call them sponsors. I'd say I was I was on the flow. I used to get products given to me by uh, NSAA, National Skate Association of Australia. I was also doing their web design at the time. So they were kind of like giving me products from like Globe and Human. I used to get shoes and, and backpacks and clothing and t-shirts and all that stuff but it was never a it was never a full-blown sponsorship but it was an on the flow situation what about harris park harris park i don't remember harris park scribbles in the chit chat scribbles man how do you do scribbles good to see you dude that's the end of the questions that came in early folks but there is a question um from the racing gamer how explain how you feel about the copper law okay well I mean, these changes to YouTube, we've we got to give credit to YouTube here. It's not, a, it's not a policy that YouTube has rolled out. It's a government-issued policy that YouTube has to uh, apply to, right? So not apply to, adhere to. So it's not like YouTube have turned around and said, all of a sudden, you got to tell us whether your content is aimed at children. It's not YouTube saying that. It's the, it's the government saying, from now on, you as YouTube have to apply, have to adhere to this rule, and therefore you've got to then address that with all of your user base. So on the one hand, I'm furious at YouTube for a number of things, but that's not one of them. Um, all that does is tell me that there is going to be other opportunities for other platforms to sneak in underneath the radar, which won't have to be affected by these situations, such as this this hardcore um, child. What is it called? Children. Child Online Protection Privacy Advocacy. advocacy. I, don't, I don't even know what it stands for. And by the way, it's only a US thing, but the implementation that YouTube have rolled out is global. So there's a bunch of things that at the moment, like if you said to me, so there's a lot of jurisdictions in, in, in YouTube's global, right? But they've got to deal with different jurisdictions amongst different territories and one of them is the united states which is their home territory australia doesn't have to sort of we don't have to cop to copper right but we have to cop to youtube so we've got to still adhere to what youtube say there are other rules in place on youtube that we don't have to cop to um that are governed by our local laws and i, I don't want to speak too deeply on that but one of them result revolves around um branded content deals right so there's an overriding situation on YouTube where if, if you get a branded content deal, you have to check a checkbox on your upload, a little checkbox that says, this is a paid endorsement. There's also uh, local rules to certain territories, such as the United States, where you have to then state on the video, this is a branded content deal. Brand X paid me to make this video. Now that's a local law to you uh, to United States not a global law. The global rule issued by YouTube is that you need to check the checkbox and it's good practice to explain to your audience that this is a branded content deal. Now, that's not copper. That's totally separate to copper. But what that tells me is that if YouTube have their own rollout of the rule and it's different for every different territory, it automatically creates ambiguity amongst the rule. So you never have a flat out consensus. You, you do if you're looking at a, at a United States creator, but if you're looking at a creator from Spain or from Argentina or from Pakistan, they're going to have a different implementation of that rule, not the copper rule, other rules. So I feel like there it's it's a different scenario, a different, a different scenario for a different set of people. By the way, Harris Park, I believe that was in Victoria, Benny, Harris Park. And I was talking about vert ramps in New South, in Sydney, basically, and the only one was Mona. And it's still a great ramp, still a great transition. A bit small from today's standard. Um, Racing Gamer, they did reach an agreement with the government resulting in copper, but they did make it super complicated to do it and adding even more restrictions, basically screwing pretty much everyone over. Yeah, I, I understand it's not a good thing. 
um, to content creators, specifically children, like child content creators, the ones that are aiming their content at children, it's basically curtains over. Like it's 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 all over for you guys. Like, um, yeah, I mean, one one could argue, and I've I've thought of this plenty of times. Every single video that I put on YouTube is a branded content deal. Every single video I upload is a branded content deal. Who's the brand? YouTube. YouTube are paying me to put up content. I get paid in the sense of AdSense revenue from YouTube to make a video. So what difference if... What's the difference if, if um, Snorkel Mart pay me to make a snorkel video? So in a sense, I've been paid twice. YouTube have paid me to make the video. Snorkel Mart have paid me to make the snorkel video. I've been paid by both. So isn't it, a, isn't it just a blanket agreement that if you are in AdSense, if you're in the AdSense revenue uh, in the program, AdSense program, you're being paid to make content by YouTube, by Google. That should be the first tick box. Are you in AdSense? Are, are you a part of the YouTube, the YPP YouTube partner program? Yes then every single thing you see here should be taken as paid promotion because YouTube are paying you to make a video, hands down. Are you getting extra payment from another company? Yes, tick the checkbox. That's all you need to do. Why, why else would, why, like, you think Jake Paul would make videos on YouTube if, if YouTube weren't paying him AdSense revenue? Hell no. All of it's paid revenue. All of it is paid content. I don't understand where it became why it's so important for a company if you get paid by a company you've got to stipulate you're all being paid if you're in ypp you're all being paid by google to make content i mean am i the only one that sees the the um the in in inadequacy of this situation you have to tell your audience if a brand outside of google pays you to make content but if we pay you you don't have to say a damn thing It's in West Sydney. Kenny Gibbons used to own the ramp in Harris Park. West Sydney, Harris Park. Okay, I don't, I, don't, I don't know of it. I mean, if there was a vert ramp... Oh, you mean Quakers Hill? That was way back, way back, way back in the day, dude. Quakers Hill. Or do you mean um, Blacktown uh, Swimming Centre? Is that what you're talking about? Blacktown Swimming Centre? I think that's near Harris Park. None of those ramps were global. Like, Mona Vale vert ramp was a global vert ramp. I mean... Hell, the Bones Brigade turned up there and sessioned unannounced, right? TH skated there unannounced. My friend Dan, clueless, Dan McEwen was skating there with his mates and Hawk rocked up because it's a global, it's a beautiful vert ramp with a global transition on the playing field of the the, the global, stance, uh, global stage. The rest of the vert ramps in Sydney were not. Paula says, yeah, you can't say it's their parents' fault, but, when I, what, but I see them all watching YouTube on their parents' phone. It's the norm in Berlin. Ah, uh, that's what YouTube Kids exists for. Yeah, true. YouTube Kids should cover that, right? Should it not? I don't know, folks. Look, I, I, I don't really. It hasn't really changed my position on YouTube too much. There's plenty of other things that are annoying about YouTube. The copper change isn't one for me uh, specifically, but plenty of things that I don't like about YouTube. Um, but I'm always going to be here. I'm just saying, like these, these, this content is why I'm on YouTube. I'm going to continue to make con uh, branded content deals. I'm going to continue to make YouTube videos. I'm going to continue to stream here once a week live. But I am going to be pushing and pumping the D Live more so than ever, as I am a VP now, verified partner on D Live. And this has been a fantastic stream. I wonder what's going to happen here. Um, is my stream going to conclude naturally or will I have to go across the deal to the YouTube studio beta to end this stream? I can hear my outro music rolling. That's a good sign. Folks, thanks for enjoying this chat with me. I will see you guys all over on DLive later on today for some more Red Dog and back here next week on the YouTube stream. Have a pleasant day. Cheers. <laughs>